<clears throat> today I'm gonna kind of give you a, a little bit of flavor of what it was like for me back in 1982. Uh, I had the Radio Shack Color Computer. I only had a couple of games for it that was just about all that Radio Shack had. Uh, and I found, found out about a magazine called uh, Rainbow Magazine uh, for the Color Computer. And I knew from talking to a store manager that there was at least a Pac-Man game. So I had hopes that maybe I'd find at least one or two more games if I subscribed to the Rainbow. So I did. And this is the first issue I got, the December of 82 issue. Well, there's a lot more than just one or two ads in here. There is, uh, I literally spent an hour looking through the ads before I read any articles or anything like that. And so today I'm going to give you just a little quick flavor of what I was seeing. Now, I won't be looking at them and paying attention to them the way I did back then, but just to let you give you a little idea of what was in there. Uh, first, from Antico, we have a game that's where you fly down a trench based on the flying down the trench uh, to destroy the Death Star in Star Wars. Uh, uh, Radio Shack did advertise in the third party magazine, so they did help support. First ad we get to for games is from Computerware, Pack Attack, Pac Man Clone, El Diablero. And El Diablo clone, or I think that's what the original game was. Doodlebug, Starship Chameleon, Storm, a, uh, a Tempest clone, Rail Runner, where you go across the rails to get to the hobo, uh, a Frogger style game, and Color Invaders. So obviously, uh, a decent selection of games starting out. From Cornsoft that put out for the official licensed version of Frogger is Avenger. And then we have Monkey Kong, which is the only uh, Donkey Kong clone uh, written for the color computer that would run in 16K, which was most, a lot of people had 16K. Some people still had 4K, but the 32K machines weren't you know, as popular at the time. so. That would have been the only one that would have run on a lot of people's machines, including my own at the time. Uh, here we have an ad for the TDP-100. Uh, Radio Shack uh, had acquired uh, RCA's antenna division, and they built a uh, different version of the color computer for those dealers to sell. Internally, it's the same as the color computer but the case is styled a little bit more like the Color Computer 2 cases and is about the same color. From Tom Mix we have uh, Donkey King which I've got a video up for. Uh, one of the best games for the Color Computer, for the original Color Computer. One of the better, maybe even the best uh, from that time period of the uh, clones or ver licensed versions of uh, Donkey Kong. This was as good as any licensed version of Donkey Kong was. And here we have Ghost Gobbler that I've got a video up of a uh, Pac-Man clone and Color Scarf Man, uh, a version of Pac-Man that would run in 4K. Colorpede, a very very good centipede clone. This was the first game that I ordered. I ordered it from this issue within the first day or two after I got the magazine. Here we got another Tom Mix ad. Of course it has Donkey King there. Protectors, a Defender clone. Caterpillar spelled with a K. A Centipede clone. Here we have Spectrum Projects who sold a lot of hardware and software. And among other things here, they have uh, the Color Stick interface. Uh, which would allow you to uh, hook a Atari style joystick up to the color computer. Uh, here we have, uh, and I'm not sure if the multipack interface was out yet or not, but here we have an expansion interface. And then from uh, Nelson Software Systems, among other things, we have Nibbler and Ms. Nibbler. From the programmers group, we have Pack Droids which if I remember correctly is Pac-Man Plus has you know, a bunch of different elements thrown in on top of it. And here we have Donkey Monkey, another clone of uh, 
another uh, version of uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, this one has two screens. The first screen is pretty much a copy of the first screen of Donkey Kong and the second one is kind of a combination of the next two screens and uh, Starfire which looks to be a Defender clone and here we have from Mark Data Products um, Astro Blast which I have a video of Color Haywire I have a video of Space Raiders and uh, Cave Hunter and then on the back from Spectral Associates um, we have Space War, Galax Attacks, Ghost Gobbler, I have a video of that up um, and it flat out says Space Invaders but I'm sure that's a clone, I'm sure that's not a licensed version so that gives you just a sample of what was available to me uh, and considering I had say like I had uh, Space Assault and uh, Polaris and that was just about it you know over the next year a lot became available from Radio Shack but at the time there wasn't but a couple really good of the popular arcade games there were a couple of other games that I played some and all you know pinball and super bust out and all but but uh, the arcade games that I wanted just weren't available so I was really happy to have this uh, and all the later issues of Rainbow I subscribed to it for maybe not quite 10 years uh, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, just a peek at what was available uh, from the third party uh, for the color computer back in 1982